Hey there, Mama, and welcome back to the Moms Overcoming Overwhelm podcast, episode number 132. I'm Emily McDermott, and I am here beside you on this journey as we work together to declutter your home, head, and heart. On today's episode, we're going to be talking to Jeanette Tapley from the Moms at Work podcast, all about what to do when we find out that our rhythms and routines are broken. And as we enter the summer season, perhaps there are some things that were working that aren't working anymore. And she is going to provide some practical tips on assessing and repairing these rhythms for more peace and ease in our lives. Jeanette is a podcast host, author, speaker, and friend who loves all things friendship, laughter, and a good cup of coffee. And when she's not recording her podcast, you can find her hanging out with her three favorite teenagers and handsome husband. Her heart beats for people to be heard, valued, and never alone, no matter what stage of life they find themselves in, whether navigating friendships, figuring out faith, raising a family, or life as an entrepreneur. She is the internet friend everyone needs who encourages people to walk through it. I know you're really going to enjoy this conversation with Jeanette, so we'll grab that notebook and pen and let's dive into today's conversation with Jeanette Tapley. Hey there, mama. Are you tired of all the stuff crowding your home calendar and mind? Do you wish you could say goodbye to the endless to-do list running around in your head? Want to declutter but don't know where to start? You're in the right place. Welcome to Mom's Overcoming Overwhelm, where you will find proven and practical solutions to declutter your home, head, and heart. Hi, I'm Emily, a wife, boy mom, and simplicity seeker. I struggled to get pregnant and felt overwhelmed until I discovered decluttering could create the physical and emotional space I needed to become a mom. Now two kids later, I've transformed my life and motherhood by developing simple systems around decluttering, capsule wardrobes, kid stuff, cleaning and tidying, meal planning, time management, and more, and I can't wait to share them with you. If you're ready to reclaim the time and energy you crave, be present with your kids, and finally enjoy the life and motherhood you so deserve, let's kick overwhelm to the curb, shall we? Grab your lukewarm coffee, your notebook and pen, and clear off some counter space. Let's do this. Well, hey, Jeanette, thank you so much for coming on the Moms Overcoming Overwhelm podcast. I'm really excited to talk to you today. Emily, thank you for having me. This is so great. Yeah. So you and I connected, actually, um, we had Natalie Hickson on the podcast here talking all about destructive anger. <laughs> uh, Again, something so I didn't know I needed until like became a mom. <laughs> right. But we'd like to see the amazing guests that my guests have on the show. So I reached out to you and I love your heart for helping working moms and being able to help us figure out how to juggle all the things, attempt to maybe balance them. I don't know. Sometimes it's hard, but I would love it if you could tell us a little bit about you and your family and how you serve moms and then anything you like to do for fun when you're not doing Ooh. all those things. Yeah. Oh, so, so good. Um, Yeah. So I am Jeanette. I've been married to my husband for almost 20 years. We um, we're not quite high school sweethearts, but we like I was in high school when we started dating and got engaged. I was in high school. When we got engaged, which is just wild. And my son will be a senior in high school next next semester. And I'm like, there's no way. Like, anyways, so that's just like a whole piece of our story, which is really funny. Um, so yeah, I have three kiddos. I have a almost 18 year old, almost 16 year old and almost 14 year old. So we are just like, we are, we are transitioning from that, like parental roles, like don't touch that. It's hot to, um, coaches and mentors. And it's a wild, it's wild to like start preparing to launch. And so as part of what we do, it's just a lot of like hanging out as a family. Um, I serve women on the internet and I have for about five or six years um, via podcasting, via speaking and writing. My favorite way to encourage women is within our homes. Like this is our greatest mission field. It's also our toughest mission field because most mission fields don't have kids talking back to us, telling us that a middle part would look better. You know, they don't, they don't typically say that out on the mission field, I don't think. And so, um, I do that by, uh, just encouraging moms, like show up at home and be, and be as available and present as they can. And then I also, a uh, podcast, I have a moms at work podcast, which is like encouraging the working mom and really and truly every mom is a working mom and just trying to help um, us all find a little bit of space in the chaos um, for ourselves and not feel guilty about that. So it is a little bit of everything. I feel like 
I love to t uh, teach on friendship and remind moms that we need friends. I love to remind moms that like we're raising our friends. Like one day, these people that we've raised will be our friends. And uh, for fun, I'm an avid reader. I love to read. And um, one of my favorite things recently has been to like pick a book on like Friday night and then like set a goal to finish it if we have the capacity on the weekends but to finish it like by Sunday and my kids are like, what are you doing? Cause I'll have like my phone. It's like a timer. I'll be like, I'm reading for 20 minutes. And then when the timer goes off, I'm going to set the timer for 15 minutes. I'm going to do chores. <laughs> and they're like, okay. So I could just like challenge myself to read a book 20 minutes at a time. Wow. That's really fun for me. <laughs> I love that. I have a friend who's a very avid reader and just like the number of books that she gets through in like a year is like mind boggling to me. Like for yeah. me, we're going to be talking about rhythms today. One yeah. of my rhythms is reading the Bible before bed. I'm doing Bible recap. I have not missed a day and reporting. But for me, that is like my reading and I do the, um, the YouTube video that goes with it. And then I don't really feel like I have more capacity to read more. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, okay, if the only thing I'm reading in this season is the Bible, I guess it's okay. <laughs> yeah. You're doing fine. You're yeah. doing a good work. <laughs> yeah. So I would love it if you could tell us a little bit about, and of course you have more mom experience than I do since your kids are almost in the launching phase here, but anytime in your motherhood, this could be recent or just years ago where you were feeling completely overwhelmed. It could be the to do's, it could be the stuff in your home. And then what you were able to do once you recognize and kind of raise the white flag, like what you were able to do to kind of start shifting things. Could you give an example of that, please? Oh, I probably have too many to go through for you. But uh, one, we were just talking about this as a family last night because my kids are now bigger and they're like, I wish you would have put us in sports more. I wish you would have done this, or I wish you wouldn't have pulled me out of this. And I'm like, here's the deal. There was a time, there was a season where I would take one kid to piano, drop them off, drop the other kid off at soccer, drop them off, drive to speech therapy, sit for 15, 20 minutes, grab her out of speech therapy, go pick up the piano kid, go pick up the soccer kid. It just, it was like a three hour block of time where we were spread so thin that I was like, I don't, I don't know how we're doing. I don't know how we're functioning. I don't know how we're, I don't know what we ate in that season. Like, honestly, I don't know what, I don't know what we had for dinner. I don't know where it was going. My husband worked shift work. So oftentimes he was gone, especially on those nights. So it just felt really chaotic. And I felt so spread thin that I wasn't giving anybody, Jesse, my friends, my kids, I wasn't giving anybody like me. I was just serving and I was exhausted. And at that same time, our daughter Zoe's adopted and she's deaf. And so she was falling behind in school, um, in her mainstream program, she was falling behind and we had to make a decision on what we were going to do for her schooling. Uh, there's no way that I could homeschool her because I didn't know enough sign language. I still don't know enough sign language to, home to, to do that. So we had to um, make a decision to send her to a residential school. Well, that meant she was going to be gone throughout our weeks and only home on the weekends. And then we were looking at our oldest who was playing soccer, but he was getting ready to age out of like the community leagues and we'd have to go into club. And I looked at him, <laughs> poor him. I looked at him at like fifth or sixth grade. and I was like, are you passionate about this? And he's like, I'm just like, fine. Like, I don't mind it. And I was like, if, if you at this age cannot tell me that you love this sport, I'm out. Like, I can't do it anymore. And so I felt I, like I told him yesterday, I feel really guilty about that. Like, because my capacity pulled him from something that like he could have he could have been great at. Like, but at the same time, as a senior in high school or coming up on a senior, he was like, yeah, it would have been fun. He's not going to go to college for it. So I was just there's just like so much of my like life then that I was like waving the white flag. This isn't working for us. So I looked at all three kids and I was like, we're pulling out of everything. We're not doing speech therapy um, at this, at this program anymore. We're not doing gymnastics. We're not doing piano lessons. We're not doing soccer. We're not doing anything. We are staying home. And then it went to like, Zoe moved up to um, the residential school and was home on the weekends because I was like, I can't justify us, her coming home on the weekends just to jump in the car and drive three hours 
like she needs to be home. She needs to like sit at her table and in her bed. And so I was like, okay. So that was me like really waving the white flag where I was like, this isn't working. And I have friends who operate that way and do it well. I can't, I couldn't do it anymore. And I really do believe that's one of like the greatest lessons I learned through COVID. My kids were already kind of out of that season, but when our life was forced to slow down to a halt, I was like, oh, this actually doesn't feel as different as I thought it would. And then when life started to pick back up, it was like that slow runway. And it was like, oh, okay, this feels good. Like it was kind of like you give your muscles that chance to relax and then you pick back up and you're like, oh, I'm stronger now. That's how I felt after coming back after COVID. Like, okay, we can, we can add in some things. We can do this. We can do that. Um, but man, it was, it was the breaking point when I was crying in the car dropping kids and missing things like I wasn't watching piano lessons I wasn't watching speech therapy I wasn't watching soccer I was just bouncing like a ping pong or like a pinball all over and so that's that's really what broke me and then we just pulled out of everything we were kind of countercultural where we're like our kids don't play sports anymore until middle school yeah well I love that because that would have been me <laughs> It could still be me. I don't know. My husband kind of is like, you seem really like anti-sports. I'm like, I'm not anti-sports. It's just that I want to be super mindful yeah. about how we approach that in our family with activities, because yeah. I am not someone that thrives in that environment. I know lots of people that do. Yeah. And so there's so much pressure, whether overt or just kind of the comparison that we naturally do as moms when we see the lives of other people and other families that have their kids in activities like every single night of the week. And I don't want that for our yeah. family. And so it's like, I understood, you know, always talking about what matters. It's like, yeah. what to me is that as many nights of the week as possible, we are eating dinner together yeah. as a family. And it's not the pinball, you know, back and forth and everything. Cause like you said, we're stressed, we're missing out. And I really applaud you for doing that because it's kind of like, it's hard not to have mom guilt, like after yeah. something like that, but then you can intentionally build things back in and depending on the age of your kids, then you can talk to them like, okay, we're prioritizing, like we're learning how to prioritize. So if you want to prioritize one sport, what would it be? Yeah. I do. I always hear like one for your body, one for your brain, which I really mm -hmm. like, you know, if you want to not just do a sport, maybe you do one thing that's for the brain, but I think that's so important. And we're going to be, you know, talking about like rhythms here and when things aren't working, like that was yeah. a great example. <laughs> like, not, working. You're not working. And so how do we like reassess and kind of recalibrate? So thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Yeah. And I think so often we don't, we don't often have the opportunity to like emergency break on like and fully stop and reset like I don't think that we give ourselves that opportunity it's like well we're already here so we have to keep going and I think that as we talk about broken rhythms I think we have to pull the emergency break and like take a second yeah for sure and I would love it if you can kind of talk a little bit about that sort of like how you would define a broken rhythm you know for for me I'm in a season right now that things that were working for me it's kind yeah. of oh wait that's not really working anymore. And sometimes we think like, is it just me? Like, am I doing something wrong? And, and of course, like the self-blame. So I would yeah. love if you could talk to us a little bit about like, what is a broken rhythm? How can we kind of like determine or diagnose if we're having a broken rhythm in our days? Could you tell us about that? Yeah. I think for me, this stemmed out of just like my to-do list overtaking me. And that was kind of like, I love a planner. I love a plan. I love walking into my office and being like, I know exactly what I'm going to do today. But when my paperwork overwhelms me or when I don't want to step into something that I typically love, I, that's a broken rhythm. Something's broken there. Um, so it can be, it can be your workload. It can be your kitchen. Like for some reason, if the dishes just can't get done, there's some, there's a broken, there's a broken rhythm there. If you can't figure out not just what to cook, but like, when dinners look like a mountain and you're like, I don't even know how we're going to cook this week. Like, I don't even know like that. Like there's like that broken cog. Like you just, when, when something so normal overwhelms you, it's like, mm, something's a mess here. What's going on? How can we, how can we fix this broken rhythm? And that to me is a, that, that is a definition of a broken rhythm. When something was once working and it is no longer enjoyable, 
it is no longer doable, that is a broken rhythm. That's how I would define it. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that as long as we can kind of see it for what it is, like not necessarily um, feel guilt about it or kind of personalize it like, oh, it's something I did wrong but no. this anymore because there are, I feel like seasons, like sometimes we think like season has to be like this long period of time, but like a season can be very short. It could be like, okay, my kids are, you know, going to be done with school it's coming up soon. And then that's going to be a change of a season. Yeah. And- have like a month before we go on vacation and then that'll be a different season, yeah. you know? So when we kind of recognize like something's not working and at least hopefully have the self-compassion to realize that it's not something that we necessarily did wrong. Um, yeah. how do you go about starting to like, quote unquote, fix something that's broken when it comes to our rhythms. Yeah. I think that we have to evaluate, like, where's my time going? Um, The first thing I do is I check my screen time. If I'm overwhelmed, there's a good chance that I'm spending my more time on my phone than I need to be doing. So I check my screen time. I kind of just list out what am I doing? That's like, what am I filling my time with? Like, where what's going on? Like, what's kind of like decluttering? Like, what's going like I have to declutter my mind like what's going like what's happening here so I start that way and I was actually just talking to a friend about this because she said I feel like I'm burning the candle at both ends I said well you are so what matters to you she's like well time like Tuesday nights at home really matter to me I was like okay so what do you have to do to change that she's like well I need to address I need to change when I'm doing this so that I can have this and I was like okay and she's like and I need to make sure we're having a date night I was like okay well how do you do that so you just have to like you kind of, it's like gardening. And when you have weeds, you kind of, you, you can't just pull the weed out and be like, Oh, there it is. But you have to get to the root of the weed and say like, this is, this is what's causing issues. I have to pull it out and assess like, what is this? Where did it come from? And then, and then make it, make it work again. And so if I, she asked me like, what's, what's, what's not working in your world right now? And I said, well, as summer hits, I want to make sure I'm having summer Fridays. I don't want to work on Fridays. She's like, what do you need to do to do that? I was like, well, I need to stop taking half of Monday off. Why am I not working a full day on Monday? I don't want to. <laughs> so she's like, so do you want to work a half a day on Monday or do you want Fridays off? I'm like, I want Fridays off. So I have to address how I'm doing that. So I think you have to decide what matters to you. You have to lay out your time and what's what's actually happening. And then you kind of play... Um, have you ever done this with your calendar where you like sticky note it and then you're like, this actually can go here and this can go here. And if I'm actually doing this task already on this day, then it makes sense for me to do this task with it. And you just kind of like batch out your weeks. That's how I do it. And so I batch it all out. And for work, I'm like, oh, that works perfectly. For kids, it's a little bit different because I can't be like, we will do that for you on this day. So like my son, this is a terrible rhythm that has been broken, but he needs glasses. And we found out he needed glasses in December and it is May. He was like, hey, can we go get glasses? And I was like, yeah, we can. And I looked, I was like, what are you doing tomorrow? Like, what's after, what's your after school like? And he's like, nothing. I was like, okay, tomorrow we will go get glasses tomorrow. Because I wasn't making it a priority. And so I have to look at my kids and be like, that's a priority. Let's put it on the calendar. Let's Let's do it. And so I think when we look at like broken rhythms and what's broken and how do we fix it, we just have to assess the damage, <laughs> like what's going on around me? What matters to me? How can I, how can I move things around? What do I need to let go of? What do I need to like, do I need time limits on my apps? What do, what do I actually need to do to make my time work for me and not me work for my time? Yeah. You actually reminded me. So my oldest poor kid, he gets strapped like every two months. Oh. I had that when I was a kid. Yeah. And so did my husband. And so I'm finally like, okay, ENT, like I finally got to go to the ENT, you know, and same thing. It's I've had the referral thinking like, oh, things will get better and they haven't. And I'm like, no, that's something I need to prioritize for my kid. What I love about some of the things you said was that kind of talking to a friend might be helpful because then, yeah each other and be like okay you say this doesn't work but what about this it's good to have people in your life that you can do that with and then also looking at the things that are life-giving versus like Mm. so if you know that there are certain things that are going to be um filling kind of you know your cup so to speak how can you make sure that those are some of those non-negotiables that are happening yeah you can look at the things that are kind of like life draining and be like, okay, well, did I just say yes to that out of obligation? Or was that something yeah. actually intentionally 
wanted to do. Cause I had that this week where like I had a little bit of margin, but yet I feel very overwhelmed in certain areas. And it was the guilt of like, no one from the PTA signed up. And so then I'm like, well, I have an hour. I guess I could do it. Yeah, It was complete guilt and obligation, how I made that decision. And so I don't want that to be the norm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. That and be like, okay, well, going forward, how I'm going to be setting things up needs to be intentional in order to kind of get this rhythm, whatever it is back on track. Yeah. I think a big part of that is looking at your week ahead of time, right? So like if you've said yes to something two weeks ago and you're like, oh man, I already said yes to that. So I have to make that work. It's like, if we look at our week and we're like, okay, so where can I create margin around this task that I said yes to? And how do I need to work? How do I need to work around it? Like, cause I think margin is so important. It's one of our churches, um, like core values. Yeah, that's exactly core value. And so it's a core value in our home. It's like creating margin is so important for me in my work and in my motherhood. I I don't want to be so task oriented with my kids that they feel like they can never rest. I want to lounge on the couch and spend time with them and what they're doing so that I can. So I have to create margin. And I do that by like sitting down at the beginning of the week uh, on my Sunday reset. And I like plan out my week. I'm like, okay, this is what we have especially like weeks like this where I'm like, okay, I'm interviewing a lot, which means my workload is going to have to shift a lot. So how am I going to, how am I going to make it all work? Yeah. I think that the concept of margin is definitely (laughs) countercultural because it is so much like, well, how much can you squeeze into each day? And then, then you are feeling like you're just going from one thing to the next, to the next. And also with kids, you know, that's one thing I want to be really intentional with them is that they're at school, like a really long time. And yeah, have, you know, at least most days, like some of that downtime, um, yeah. something where you're looking at your days and you're like, okay, well, what are the afternoons or the evening is going to look like in this new yep. season? Just making sure that you're kind of taking rest and margin and all of that into account. Yeah. It's interesting too. I just told, uh, I was, I was probably talking to Jesse about it, but we had a Saturday with nothing planned. The kids had to work or something like that, but there was nothing planned. And I was like, I feel totally guilty because a lot of our friends are like, and we have older kids. So a lot of our friends are like doing the soccer games and stuff like that. So we're not in that stage, but I was like, Oh, I'm feeling like oddly guilty that we don't have anything going on. Um, And he was like, yeah, it's kind of weird. I'm like, do we plan something? And he's like, I'm actually really tired. So I'd, I'd enjoy the rest. I was like, all right, let's rest. Like, let's, let's have, let's have a lazy day. Let's like do nothing today. And it was, it, but it's weird because we feel guilty for those days. And also I've found with some people that like strikes fear into their heart and they're like, oh, we have a day for with nothing planned. Like what's yeah. going to happen, you know? And it's because our kids, in my opinion, they get so used to being so hyperly, like overly scheduled yep. that when you don't have the rest, then they're kind of like, don't know what to do with themselves. Yeah. I think, you know, especially with my kids being a little bit on the younger side, that's something that I really want to teach them. Like rest is good. It's okay. Doing something every single minute, kind of like having that, you know, Sabbath concept, especially like, you know, on Sunday, if we can, um, that that can be more the norm, even if people around us are going to like (laughs) three soccer games and a lacrosse practice, like like that doesn't, that doesn't have to be us. And I, um, I love how you, you know, when we're talking about rhythms and we're kind of reassessing that we, um, you know, ask the question, like, what is this teaching me? And I was if you, I guess, had an example, maybe it could be um, with some of like the the sports or activities. Have you kind of reassessed in that way where you're asking yourself like, hmm, what is this broken rhythm, you know, trying to teach me? Is this like an opportunity to like reconnect with certain people or to reconnect yeah. with family? Have you had anything in the last, you know, maybe three to six months where you're like, oh, huh, this is what this taught me. And then you were able to kind of reconnect or recalibrate things. Yeah, I think for me, it's really been, I kind of fought against this like broken, the broken rhythm that like my mornings weren't working. Like my morning routine, we talked about it on the podcast where it was like people glorify this like morning routine. Well, I was, I kind of bucked the system where I was like, I don't think I need a morning routine. I don't need it. I, it actually hinders me. And so 
as I was like kind of dissecting it with the Lord and with myself and like how my days were feeling, I was like, oh shoot, I actually think I do need a morning routine. It it helps me prepare for my day. So like this broken rhythm of like, I don't actually need this or it's not working for me. That's really what it was. It, was this, it wasn't working for me because I was starting it too late because I wasn't actually doing it. Like I wasn't, I wasn't putting effort into it. It just, it wasn't working. And so I kind of bucked the system and I was like, I actually don't need a morning routine. I can just like sit down, have my coffee, TikTok and scroll and then, and then work. And then I was like, I actually don't need it. It's fine. And then I did this whole deep dive into like the morning routine. Why, why we're obsessed with it as a culture, um, what it actually can look like. And I like that you said that you do your, your Bible reading at night before bed. Is that right? And I like that because I'm like, we have been told it has to, your mornings have to look a certain way. And so I was like, okay, well, I'm going to try to redo my morning routine and actually like see where I'm broken. And that's really where, like where I am broken, Not broken, <laughs> where the rhythm was broken, we'll say. And so, um, it was interesting to me though, because as I practiced, like waking up a little bit earlier, um, walking the dogs and doing this, I, I was finding peace in my day. And it was surprising to me. And I was like, oh, so the broken rhythm wasn't that I just, it wasn't working for me. It, it, it's that I wasn't doing it in a season that fed me. And the crazy thing is, is I can't do the morning routine the way I want to do it right now because I am still helping my kids get up for school and getting them out to school. But I know that come this summer, I can switch it and it actually will work for me. And I'm actually so excited about that because I'm like, I'm like, well, I want to be out the door and walking by seven. Well, I have to wake Titus up at 715 and it's a 20 minute walk. And how's that going to work? And so I was stressed out because I'm like, well, it's not working. It's supposed to work. And I was like, oh, wait, if I just like shift it a little bit, that's going to work for me in this month and this season. And then next month I can shift it again and it's going to work for me better in that season. So I think that that to me is, is where it's like, that was like, that's not working. And I'm still like, I'm still really working on the um, making it work. Like I like it, but I don't love it. And I I want to love it. Yeah. And just kind of having that sort of like flexibility and understanding yeah. that it's not that you have to throw everything away. It could just be kind yeah. of tweaking for certain parts of the season and then you're kind of shifting it back. So I love that kind of having that open-handed, you know, sort of approach. Yeah. Um, this has been so helpful. Like I said, Jeanette, I'm like, I'm oh, dealing with a lot of broken rhythms in my life yeah. and some encouragement. And I know you are all about encouraging moms and helping them. And um, can you please tell us the best way for everybody to connect with you if they want to learn more and if they want to be encouraged by you, which I know that yeah. you have been, but if they want to be encouraged more. <laughs> That's so sweet. Uh, the best place to connect with me is probably Instagram. I feel like I'm on Instagram the most and that's Jeanette freaking Tapley um, on Instagram. Uh, I am on TikTok. So if any of your listeners are on TikTok, it's Jeanette Tapley on TikTok. Uh, but if you want to like listen in and be encouraged on like a weekly ish basis, um, follow uh, moms at work, the podcast It is full of just encouragement for the working mom. So often I get to just sit behind the mic and like talk to you like one-on-one, -on -one, which I love. And then uh, we do sprinkle in some interviews and that. And then we have the Joy Millionaire podcast, which is a podcast that helps us uh, store up a treasure trove of joy to help us um, be joy millionaires. And that's a, that's a fun story that came out of my son's depression and how we just overcame and how we live joyful lives on purpose. And so that's a interview based podcast as well. And uh, yeah, so both those podcasts are the internet. It's the best way. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. I'll make sure to link to all of those in the show notes. So thank you again for coming on the show. It was just really wonderful talking to you. Thank you so much for having me. It was so fun. We got to spend like a little bit of time together. So I love this. Oh, <laughs> yes, it was so great. Thank you again. If you like today's podcast, here's what you can do. Just take 30 seconds to leave me a review. I know you're a busy mama. You're overwhelmed, in fact. But 30 seconds of your day makes such an impact. I'll be blessed by your words. They'll definitely make my day. And who knows, you might be entered for this month's giveaway. An Apple podcast, scroll down to write a review. Thanks so much for your time. I'm so grateful for you.